was a historic season for Liberty University football as they made it all the way to the second round of the FCS playoff. Yes, they did, including their first ever playoff victory. It's a season everyone will remember. Head coach Turner Gill will join us to talk about it. That's coming up next on this special edition of Game On. Welcome to a special edition of Game On. I'm Clement Towns alongside Matt Warner. What a fantastic year yeah. for the Liberty football team as they picked up nine wins. Matt, I feel pretty safe in saying they exceeded expectations. Yeah, they certainly exceeded outside expectations. I think they reached their own goals. They made it really clear before the season, this is the year we make the playoffs. And they did just that, not only making the playoffs by beating number one ranked Coastal Carolina in one of the most dramatic games we've seen, but then they won when they got there, knocking off James Madison as well on the road. Truly a remarkable season, but no matter how you look at it. Absolutely. Let's take a look back at the remarkable ride. The 2014 Flames football team opened the season on the road against FBS and ACC opponent, the UNC Tar Heels. Liberty was able to keep the game close in the first half as the Tar Heels took a 21-15 lead into the locker room. However, a 28-point surge in the third quarter safely put the game away for North Carolina, and the Flames dropped their opener at Chapel Hill. Liberty then traveled to Norfolk, Virginia to take on MEAC opponent Norfolk State. Quarterback Josh Woodrum would take charge in the game, running and throwing for two scores to give the Flames a 17-point lead. The defense shut down the Spartans as Liberty recorded their first win of the season. The Flames returned to Williams Stadium for their home opener against Brevard College in front of 16,000 fans. Running back DJ Abner scored twice in the game, and Woodrum threw touchdown passes to Shells, Herman, Henderson, and an 86-yard bomb to Darren Peterson to cap a 56-31 win over the Tornadoes. The next home opponent for the Flames would be the 25th-ranked and undefeated Bryant Bulldogs. This time, the Flames established their running game with both Woodrum and Abner scoring two touchdowns each as the Flames coasted to a 38-21 win. Liberty was back on the road, this time in Terre Haute, Indiana, to face the Sycamores of Indiana State. Despite two touchdown tosses from Woodrum to Shells and Peterson, the Sycamores' defense held the Flames at bay and handed Liberty their second loss of the season by the score of 38-19. Up next would be 20th-ranked Richmond and former Liberty head coach Danny Rocco. The game lived up to its billing, with both teams battling down to the final play. With time running out, John Lunsford hit a 60-yard field goal, breaking the Liberty and Big South records and sending the game into overtime. Liberty scored first in the overtime period, but the Spiders responded with a touchdown of their own to send the game into double overtime. Liberty would be unable to score in the second overtime, and Richmond defeated the Flames in front of nearly 21,000 fans. Rebounding from two consecutive losses would prove to be tough as Liberty traveled to Boone, North Carolina to take on FBS opponent, the Appalachian State Mountaineers. The game, much like the Richmond game, would go back and forth, and with six minutes left in the fourth quarter, Woodrum scored on a 13-yard run to tie the game at 48. In the overtime period, Woodrum would hit Peterson with a nine-yard pass to put the Flames in the lead. Then Jacob Hagan intercepted a Mountaineers pass in the end zone to seal the Liberty victory. Gardner-Webb came to Lynchburg for Liberty's conference opener. The Flames tacked on 34 points in the first three quarters, and the defense took over as the Flames recorded their second shutout of the season to move to 4-3 and three on the year. Liberty then traveled to Clinton, South Carolina to take on a much-improved Blue Hose team from Presbyterian College. When the teams arrived at the stadium, they were greeted with an inch of snow on the field. Four different players scored as Woodrum would toss touchdown passes to Henderson and Peterson and rush for another, while Abner capped the scoring with a one-yard touchdown run to lead the Flames to another road victory, this time 28-7. Monmouth was Liberty's third conference opponent of the year. Gabe Henderson and Peterson each scored on passes from Woodrum, and DJ Abner also scored twice as Liberty held on to preserve the win and moved to 3-0 in conference play. 
Redshirt freshman Stefan Masha would step in to take over the quarterbacking responsibilities in place of the injured Woodrum as the Buccaneers from Charleston Southern came to Williams Stadium to face the Flames. Despite three touchdown catches by Darren Peterson, the game came down to a missed extra point by Lunsford as the Flames fell to the Buccaneers. The following game against number one ranked Coastal Carolina would be a winner take all scenario. The game on the road at Coastal Carolina would have all the makings of a national playoff game with the winner receiving a share of the conference title and the automatic bid to the NCAA playoffs. The odds were not in Liberty's favor. Coastal was playing in front of their home crowd on senior day and boasted the Big South Conference's preseason best offensive and defensive players in their lineup. Meanwhile, Liberty was countering with a redshirt freshman quarterback with only one start under his belt. The Flames took the lead on their first possession of the game with a 32-yard field goal. Coastal then came back in the second quarter and tacked on two scores to lead at halftime 14-6. The second half proved to be all Liberty as they shut down the Coastal offense and scored twice on a pass to Peterson and a field goal by Lunsford to lead 15-14 with time running out on the clock. With just seconds remaining, Coastal attempted a game-winning field goal, only to see Liberty's Chima Uzawehi block the 24-yard attempt and help the Flames capture their first-ever automatic bid to the FCS playoffs and a share of the Big South Conference Championship. Liberty would be seated against the James Madison Dukes in the opening round of the 2014 FCS playoffs in Harrisonburg, Virginia the next Saturday. Over 2,000 fans showed up to cheer on their flames as they opened up the scoring with a field goal from Lunsford and a touchdown run by Abner. JMU would then score three consecutive touchdowns to lead the flames at the half 21-10. Liberty would play what could be argued as their best half of football of the season, shutting down the Dukes' offense in the second half, while Woodrum led the Flames to two touchdowns. Lunsford also connected on a 56-yard field goal to seal the first-round victory for the Flames, 26-21. The play of the game occurred on a fake field goal attempt on fourth down by holder Javon Shishati, who ran for the first down, enabling the Flames' Abner to eventually score the touchdown to pull Liberty within one point of the lead. Liberty with the win moved into the second round of the playoffs against the sixth ranked Villanova Wildcats. Over 700 fans packed 22 buses and left Lynchburg heading to Philadelphia for another road battle against a top 10 ranked opponent. Liberty jumped out to the early lead and a fumble led to a touchdown to put the Flames ahead 19-14 going into the half. Liberty would add a field goal by Lunsford to go ahead by eight, only to see Villanova's quarterback John Robertson score and tack on a two-point conversion to tie the game in the fourth quarter. Robertson then took a page out of Liberty's playbook and ran the ball down the field while eating up the clock. Villanova scored with 1-12 left in the game and Liberty had one final chance to win. However, time would expire and close the book on Liberty's historic run at an NCAA championship. The Flames provided a lifetime of memories for fans and turned the corner as a program, providing a foundation for future teams to build upon. This was truly a team and staff made of champions for Christ. Nine wins. What a season it was for the Liberty football team. Head coach Turner Gill here to talk about it more. Coach, when you think about the year that you had, what kind of jumps out to you about the success that you all had this season? Relentless. Uh, we were relevant. Uh, we won big games when we had to, to do it, um, and our guys believed in each other. Our coaches did a great job of coaching and teaching, and then I cannot, definitely cannot leave out our fans. Big time support, proud of our fans and great support that they love about our football program. They made a big difference because they gave us a lot of support. No football season is easy. You guys faced some obstacles, certainly injuries. You know, Des Rice going down before the year, injuries to the linebacker, Josh Woodrum being out for a couple of ball games. Just how pleased were you with the way that your team battled through that and just the, the mental toughness that they showed throughout the season? Well, that's what a championship football team does. And uh, we talk about all those things of saying, hey, there's going to be things that's happened that you can't control. Uh, we always got to be ready to play. Uh, again, you might be a first team guy, you might be a second team guy, but you got to be ready to play. And so we always get our second team guys. They get about, oh, probably one third of what the reps of the first team guys because we know there's going to be some situations that come about. And so I'm proud of this football team because they know how to respond, they know how to win, and they know how to do it together as a team. Yes, football is a team sport, but on every team, there's a guy who seems to step to the forefront. For you this season on offense, who is a guy that really made a major contribution on the field and on defense? 
Well, DJ Abner is the one that's going to stand out from the yeah. offensive side of it because we lost uh, Des Rice. Uh, we knew uh, DJ was good, uh, but I want to say about the endurance. Uh, again, he knows he's going to be some good football player, but to say he was going to last all 13, 14 ball games, I, I would not have said that, that he's going to probably miss some time. Uh, but again, his uh, endurance, uh, perseverance, toughness, speed was great. The other guy is Nick Newman, uh, a linebacker. We had moved from safety to linebacker. We knew he had potential, but man, he came on and really made some big plays, particularly in the second half of the season. A couple of your MVPs there you talked about on either side. Was there a guy, maybe a young guy, you talked about Abner surprising you a little bit. Was there some younger guys that surprised you at all, maybe played I guess over their head or better than you expected them to this year? Well, I think uh, Justin Guillory yeah. uh, and Tyron Holloway both were red shirt freshmen, so they redshirted last year, and this year they were thrown to the fire. When you put out somebody on the corners, uh, you can't hide them. Uh, everybody's going to find out where they are, and they're going to try to expose to them, and really proud the way they played in the second half, which we thought as the season went along, they're going to be a little bit better, a little bit better, and really they played extremely well. We didn't have those guys, no question there, as we played uh, Coastal Carolina and James Madison, uh, we wouldn't have won those football games. What does it do for the program to get a taste of the playoffs and not only get a taste, but you all won a playoff game and went to the second round? Well, it's huge. Uh, again, uh, I think overall, as far as our, our exposure, our football program, it made us relevant. Uh, I think everybody is going to look at uh, Liberty a little bit different than what they have in the past. I think internally, as far as us players and us coaches, we know that we can compete against anybody. Uh, so let's go play anywhere, any place, anytime. Now we're going to talk to a couple of your assistants later on in the show. You know, I've heard it said, you know, a head coach is only as good as the people he surrounds himself with, and that's a big part of the job, finding people that you work well with. What can you say about your coordinators and your, your staff as a whole and, and the way that they went about their business this year? Well, uh, no doubt uh, Coach Stam and, uh, and obviously Coach Wimberly did a fantastic job there. They learned how to make adjustments. Uh, if you're not able to make adjustments during the ball game, you won't win championships. And so our guys demonstrated that, not just from a scheme side of it, because they had to do something at halftime, third quarter, yeah. fourth quarter, but also with personnel. Sometimes you got to make some adjustments and some changes, and uh, our guys did a great job. You all were an offensive team. You all play well on defense as well, but coming into the season, everybody felt you all would be an offensive team. Next year, Darren Peterson is back. Josh Woodrum is back. You should get Dez Rice back. I mean, you have to be excited about all the guys that are returning, especially what you all did this season. Feel good about that. We got great experience at a lot of great spots, and I anticipate everybody even get better. I, I anticipate even Darren Peterson be better than what he was last year. You said, well, how can he be a little better yeah, than he was last yeah. year? <laughs> well, we, we got some things that's already been pointed out that he can get better at, and Josh Woodrum too. He's going to be better, and I really feel like the offensive line, we got a whole lot of people back. We've got some places that we're going to have to uh, get some people better to play at those spots that we lose. What are some of those spots that you feel you need to improve? On the offensive side, their center is going to be one and then tight end. Those are the big two that we got to make sure we get some people in. I have all the confidence in the world for us, Coach Stan with the tight ends and Dennis Wagner there with our offensive line. Coach, we appreciate it. We know it's back to work for you, hitting the recruiting trail and getting ready for a new class of uh, Flames players. Congrats once again on a fantastic season. Look forward to talking to you about this next year yeah, or sometime in the absolutely. future. Well, thank you, and to God be the glory. When we come back, we continue our look at the Flames' fantastic football season. We'll hear from offensive coordinator Aaron Stam. Don't go away. Game on. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. We continue talking about this fantastic Liberty football season. Thrilled to welcome in now offensive coordinator Aaron Stamp. Coach, your first time on the show. Thanks yeah. so much for making your way over. Beautiful set. It's taking too long, but we're glad you're finally here. <laughs> Happy to be here. Let's talk a little bit about this season. Obviously, it's still fresh. The further you get, get away from it, maybe the better perspective you can have on it. But mm -hmm. right now, just your biggest takeaways from this season, goals reached, uh, maybe some areas you feel like you can continue to improve. Here's your big takeaways from this past year. Uh, number one, you know, we uh, – we won the Big South, and that's the main thing uh, because that guaranteed us to get into the playoffs for the first time and, and obviously to go on and, and win the first playoff game yeah. and, and to get to the second round was was great accomplishment. And, and uh, you know, I was just really happy for the guys and the seniors that are out going. We had six of them on offense, and, and uh, you know, those guys played really, really well as a unit. We battled through some adversity this year. Uh, you know, we beat an FBS opponent. Um, you know, some things that we need to improve on. You know, just coming out and being better on third down earlier in the season. Later on, tw and towards the end of the season, we got a lot better. Uh, take care of the ball better. But, uh, you know, overall, I thought we had some guys that really stepped up. First-time players this year uh, that performed well. Talk more about those guys that you feel like really took a step forward and made an impact on the offense. Well, I think the first one was D.J. Abner. Yeah. Um, that was the first person out of Coach Gill's mouth, too, yeah. when we talked with him. Yeah, I mean, you know, D.J. Uh, knew what he was going to have to go and get, but I don't think any of us knew what we were going to get. 
Um, I believe he led the conference in rushing attempts uh, to have over 1,200 yards. And I always joke with him that he's like 140 pounds. <laughs> um, you know, to do what he did, he really had a heart of a warrior this year. And uh, to do what we, what we asked him to do and more was absolutely outstanding because it made everybody else around him better. Were you hesitant at all? There were a couple of games where he had like 30 carries, 28 carries. Were you hesitant to keep, one game, right? Yeah, yeah. Were you hesitant to keep calling his number like that? No. No. Uh, communicated with the coaches on the sideline and, you know, just talked to Coach Fobbs and said, how is he? He said, just keep rolling. Wow. And, uh, you know, and DJ is that type of a guy. He's uh, He can get his momentum going really good, too, in a ball game. And uh, it showed this year. Mini beast mode, maybe. <laughs> Here we go there. Deuce yeah. the, the caboose. Deuce the caboose. He likes that one yeah, more, I does. think. You had some guys step in because of injuries, and we talked mm -hmm. to Coach Hill about this, too. You lose your quarterback for the last couple of games, you're turning to a young guy in Stefan Masha, and maybe this is as much a credit to you getting him ready for the game as it is to him, but just talk about the luxury of having a kid like that, and maybe that shows how far this program has come, that you have your star quarterback go down, and you've got someone so talented ready waiting in the wings. Yeah, Stefan, is, he, he's a special guy, and uh, you know he's a different guy also than too, than Josh, but uh, also very similar in his competitive ways, and um, you know I, I give a lot of credit to, to him, uh, for preparing, uh, you know, Coach Daly, your quarterback coach, getting him ready also too. And, you know, we just we just kind of sat down and said, all right, what is this guy capable to do to help us win the football game? And, you know, uh, he just he stepped in. The thing I love about Stefan is no matter what happens in the game, he doesn't get rattled. He stays the same. And, uh, you know, we saw that in the Coastal Carolina game. We saw it in the Charleston Southern game. Um, he's, uh, he's, he's a good football player. And, and it also helped this year earlier. Uh, to, to get him in some different roles. Yeah. You know, when we lost uh, Todd Macon and Josh Smith also to, to injuries, uh, we were able to get him into, into the football game because we felt like he's a good athlete and he could give us something. And I think that kind of helped bridge it a little bit. Obviously, playing quarterback and playing running back is two yeah, different worlds. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, his, uh, the way he, he went and did some things was, was, was great for all of us. The position's in good hands for the future. No yeah, doubt. yeah, we think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. John Lunsford, the field goal kicker, obviously that's more a uh, special team, so to mm -hmm. speak, when we talk about field goal kicking. But what does it do from a play-calling perspective, knowing if you get to about the 35, your field goal kicker can, can come on and you at least get three yeah it's a it's a it's a good feeling <laughs> it's a very good feeling um, you know I get I had the, the pleasure of working with John and, and with Trey Turner uh, kind of as a position coach and uh, to see John's progress from last year to this year was really a great thing uh, just for his own uh, you know personal confidence too and uh, you know we tried to instill that in him also too but it was always funny before every game say hey John uh, what yard line do we got to get to? Eh, 40. 40. <laughs> All right, so it's 57 yard. What if we're kicking with the wind? Well, I'm good from 65. You know, and it's funny that you say that, but he can do it. You know, I mean, the, the field goal that he hit against JMU was good from probably at least 65 yards. And, uh, you know, he's, he's definitely a weapon that we are blessed to have. You know, Coach, a lot, of, a lot of coaches around the country talk about building a program and laying the foundation. You guys have done it now, getting into the playoffs. Just real quick, what this means for the future for you guys? I think it's great. It helps recruiting number one, and uh, you got to keep re uh, you know refilling the tanks. And uh, you know we have a lot of good players coming back. You know, fortunately, uh, we don't lose a whole lot of guys. Uh, we do lose some very experienced football players uh, that that were big for us. Uh, you know, Gabe Henderson, Dexter Herman, uh, Mitch Hansen. You know, Greg Ray, you know, guys that have played significant amount of, of plays for us. Uh, so that'll be interesting as we head into the future to find out who's going to replace those guys and step into those roles. Uh, but it's big because now also the guys that are returning understand what the expectation and, and then where do we go from here? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll find out about the leadership of our program internally and, and see uh, – uh, see what the next step is, but uh, we're excited for it. I know that. Coach Stam, you all certainly set the bar high this year. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Don't move a muscle. When we come back, we'll hear from defensive coordinator Robert Wembley. Game on continues after this break. Welcome back. We are now joined by defensive coordinator Robert Wimberly. Coach, thanks for dropping by. Appreciate it. Talk about the defense. It seemed like as the season went on, they got better and better, stronger and stronger, particularly what you all did against Coastal and James Madison. Why do you feel the D improved as the year went on? Well, I, I kind of knew in our staff, we knew it was going to be a maturation process. We lost a lot of experienced guys, especially in the back end last year. And so we knew going in that we was going to probably have some bumps along the way. 
uh, especially in the passing game. And uh, that <laughs> pretty came to fruition a little bit against some of the great offenses that we faced. But we stayed true to the course. Uh, we believed in what we were teaching. We believed in our schemes. And I think our guys started gaining a lot of confidence, especially as we went into conference play. You have the luxury of having a guy who talked a lot about this. He, Jacob Hagan, back at the safety position, one yeah. of the best defensive players in the country. What did he mean, and what does it mean now with him moving on? Who do you expect to kind of slide into that leadership role? Well, just as you said, he is going to be big shoes to fill. He brought great leadership uh, by example. You know, he didn't. He wasn't a big rah rah guy. Yeah. But as far as preparation and preparing each game. Uh, making sure that we had our young men ready to go. Uh, he took that upon himself. He wanted to make this year a special year. He said that from last November when we sat in that room and we didn't get our name called. He, you know, he made a promise to that defense, and I believe he carried that to fruition. Uh, you know, as far as who's going to fill those shoes, we're going to see. You know, I gave a challenge out to the guys yesterday uh, that we need some guys to step up, not so much talking and be rah-rah guys, yeah. but leading by example in the offseason, leading by example in their academics. So, you know, we're going to see, and I'm excited to see who's going to uh, step up. You all really persevered this year through some injuries. You lost Nick Sigmund. You lost Jimmy O'Grady. You lost a couple of linebackers, yeah. like, in the same game. Same yeah. series. The same <laughs> series. I don't think you've ever seen anything like that, and how did you all try to overcome that? Yeah, I've never seen. I've been coaching for over 10 years, and, uh, I mean, all I could say on the sideline was, wow. <laughs> you know, to see that happen, you know, three plays after each other, you know, it was definitely a little shock. But, you know, we tried to rebound, uh, you know, gave opportunities for guys like Nick Newman, uh, Dylan Llewellyn, and also Dexter Robbins to step their game up, which I believe they did and got great game experience. And, you know, when Nick Sigmund and Jimmy O'Grady came back, I think it provided that depth that we needed going into conference play and it really helped us play as well as we did in the last uh, two or three games. Coach, you won an award. We'll mention that. We'll give you some love here. A national award for assistant coach of the year in the FCS. Were you surprised? Did you know that you were up for this? And what does it mean to receive such an honor? Well, I knew I was up for it uh, at the end of May. Uh, you know, Coach uh, Gill decided to nominate me. Um, you know, I didn't think too much about it. You know, uh, I worked with uh, Mr. Gomes, who filled out the paperwork and everything and gave him the information that I had, uh, you know, talked talk to him about what I did in the community through my church, uh, Living Word Ministries, and my pastor, uh, James Cam. And uh, we put that down, not thinking anything of it. And then uh, two weeks ago, Coach Gill uh, pulled me out of the staff meeting. I thought I was going to the principal's office. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, you know, all nervous, thought something may have occurred. And uh, he came in, uh, had a big smile on his face and just told me, hey, you've been uh, selected uh, for the uh, AFCA Assistant Coaches of the Year. And it's very humbling. You know, like I told Coach and even our staff and our players, I'm, I'm more excited for Liberty University and what the university represents. It, it, it definitely has the same values that I have personally and just to bring more exposure to the university I'm honored to be able to do that and uh, like I said very humbled certainly well deserved on offense we asked coach Gill and we asked coach Stam who is somebody that stuck out both of those guys said DJ Abner same question for you on defense who is a player that just really took a step forward and made a huge impact this season I'm gonna say Dominique Davis yeah. uh, you know Dominique Davis was a young man that played defensive end the first two years I've been here as a coordinator along with coach Singletary and uh, we, we, we needed a three technique uh, and we needed somebody to step in and uh, you know definitely had some questions if he would be able to do it because he had injury play seasons the last two years but you know we took that chance he came on in camp and did an excellent job and I think the season speaks for itself for a young man to step in that role and get in the trenches like that and do what he did he definitely helped us be a better defense. Coach, thanks so much for stopping by. This was a great season, a historic season, and the future is only brighter. Can't oh, wait. Yes. We're already looking ahead. I know you got a lot of work <laughs> still to do, and you maybe take a breath or two. We're already looking ahead to 2015. Thank you very much. Appreciate being here. Defensive coordinator Robert Wimberly, thanks for joining us. Thank all of you for joining us for this special edition, taking a look at this past season for Liberty Flames football. A lot of great things still to come. For Clement Townsend, I'm Matt Warner. We'll see you next time. Game on.